I'm talking today with Susan Moran, who's one of the three artists in the upcoming Discovery Through Process Contemporary Fiber Art Show at the Arts Council of White Lake, which will be open to the public on April 30th. Uh, there will be a free reception for the artists on the closing date of the exhibit, which is Saturday, June 8th from 1 to 3 p.m. Susan Moran from Ann Arbor creates dense and lyrical large scale embroidered wall textiles. The scale of her work invites the viewer to visually step into the inventive world she composes from vintage textiles, collage, and stitch resist dyed imagery. A keen observer of nature, Susan creates hybrid images inspired by objects found in our natural and human-made environment. And you can find out more about her work at www.susanmorantextiles.com. Uh, Susan, thanks so much for talking to me today. Thanks for interviewing me. I'm happy yeah. to be here. So uh, I was looking at your website, which is a phenomenal website. If people should definitely check it out. Um, several of your pieces are displayed alongside poems, including poems by W.B. Yeats, Robert Frost, and Richard Wilbur. Um, and I was wondering, how often do you take inspiration from poetry and are there other mediums that also influence your work? Well, I would say that I I often I have a collection actually on my on my work board and in notebooks. I have a collection of poetry and fragments of fiction that I've come across over the years with books that I particularly like. And there's just something sometimes it's a kind of an image that's suggested through the writing and other times it's just beautiful writing that makes me, um, uh, I don't know, I'm just able to enter into a certain kind of world when I read these phrases or stanzas. And so I've copied them and I keep them around. Um, when I did the website, I was interested in finding poetry or writing that mentioned textiles. Um, and that was, you know, kind of the reason that I that I put that one poem um, by Yeats on there. But it's more general than that. It's it's more that I think for me, writing is a uh, very parallel to art, uh, visual art making in that it's mostly metaphorical and what at least I am trying to do is is sort of create um create a world a, a kind of a, a haven that a viewer can enter into that is somewhat universally familiar but also personal and particular to me because it's got my hand in it and I, I feel when I read poetry that it's a similar thing, even though I haven't, I, I didn't study literature, but I, I see that poetry can't be rephrased. It just is what it is. And it's just beautiful like that. And I think that um, my experience of art is similar to that. And it's what I'm kind of striving for that, you know, people are going to not need to translate literally what what I'm trying to get across, but they're going to have an experience that um, hopefully is related to the goal that I had when I was making the work. Well, that's really interesting. Do you um, do you do any writing yourself? Um, not in any very... Uh, not in any professional way. I do, I do write. Uh, sometimes it helps me to start an idea if I'm if I write, uh, and that can even be more so than sketching, um, because a lot of the times, at least in these recent years, the way I work is more that I have made images, but I don't necessarily um, make a sketch of the finished piece. It, it's more that I have a collection that I work with and assemble it and gradually it comes together. I have a, a phrase in my mind or, um, you know, a goal, an idea, uh, and it kind of skips over the sketching period or the sketch might be really, really general. Oh, that's really interesting that, that it's it, almost like you're you're not trying to pre-visualize the exact thing, but sort of maybe get the feeling of it or. Yeah, it, I have a, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of honing in on it 
also because a lot of the uh, a lot of what I do is silk screening, and I I need to print the image using the silk screen on many different surfaces. This is just the way I go about it. And I, I really can't always know what I'm going to get because it's an interaction between my image and the surface of the fabric. So it's affected by texture or the color of the cloth or painting that I do into it and what I might do after and what I might collage into it. So it the, the, the sketch that I start out with is very, very rudimentary and um, the, the process, the stages of the process help to create the final result. And as I start assembling it, sometimes it will, um, it, it, it's almost like it evolves on its own. I don't know. That's so interesting. Well, that's kind really of like uh, it's kind of like authors say, uh, you know, oh, I was writing this this novel and the character started speaking to me, <laughs> and I, you know, it's almost like that when you when you work with your materials and if I have enough materials around me, then I'll start to you know look at them and think, oh, I could cut a piece of that and put it on here, and then that will change what I have, and I might just go down a whole different route because of what I added, but I didn't know I was going to add that. That's perfect. That's so perfect for this show. Like the, the discovery through process, you're discovering mm -hmm. so much as you, as you make the work. Yeah. I, I don't remember who thought of the title, but it is really, <laughs> it's really appropriate. <laughs> and I think we all agree. I think we all have that similar um, kind of thought process to greater or lesser degree. For sure. Yeah. Um, on your website, you also mentioned that on a trip to Europe, you became fascinated with the geometric, geometric patterning of floors and walls, uh, particularly in the, the mosques of Istanbul. You wrote, in reading about this tradition of Arabic design, I was particularly struck by an observation that Islamic decorative art does not seek to showcase individual expression, but to use the practice of designing the pattern as a means to spiritual experience. And you said this was particularly intriguing to you. And I wonder what it was about that concept that so resonated with you. Um, I, I like the idea that um, you can sink into an activity and that it is not, um, it's not driven by your desire to look a certain way to the rest of the world. It's more that um, it creates uh, an environment in which you can, um, I don't know, de just have a deeper experience um, for, and mine is not religious, but I, I feel like it's, um, it's a similar, uh, sort of set of circumstances that are created. And when I go, there are certain um, phases that I go through when I'm working on something. Some of them are really kind of active and physical to get the composition started or get the basics laid out through printing. But there's a phase later on that usually involves either stitching or collaging bits of fabric onto the main composition. And it's that phase where I am just, it's just me and this cloth. And I, it's, you know, I just get to um, use my mind at the same time that my hands are working. Um, and I think that the when I when I saw the these intricate patterns in Istanbul, it was just it I don't know, it just made a connection to me um in that kind of way. Um I think it also has to do with repetition. Um that there's a beauty in repetition and I certainly 
use a lot of patterning and repetition. Um, and one thing that I love about textiles is that you can, when you're making something by hand, you can employ repetition, which is very soothing and harmonious for, I think, everybody. Everybody's attracted to patterning. Um, but when you make it by hand, although it may have repetition, it's never exactly the same. There's always this, there's your hand in there and there's your mind and it's the particular time of day and what you did, it's all kind of recorded in there. Um, and, you know, maybe nobody else sees that, but I, I really value that. And I like that idea that you can kind of embed yourself into what you're making. That's, uh, that's really interesting. And it, um, I just looked at some of your work and I saw that Sue mentioned, Sue Wink, our assistant director here mentioned that you hand stitch, I think everything that you do. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do any, if I'm doing stitching as, um, an embellishment layer. Yeah, it's always done by hand. I don't use the machine. It's like taking the needle and thread and drawing with it. So, um, but it also interlaces the cloth, the, the cloth and the thread instead of, you know, some some processes, the, the, the line might be just on the surface, but this way it's kind of linked together like weaving is too. Can you tell me about potato dextrin resist and how you've used it uh, in your pieces? Sure. There's there's one small collage in the show. It's called uh, Lake Edge. And if people look at that, they'll see it's a sort of abstracted. The inspiration was looking through the water, um, seeing the rocks in the sort of shallow edge of a lake. And so I, as the backing uh, layer of the collage, I used a piece that was made using this technique called potato dextrin resist. And it's a paste that you make from potato starch. It's really thick and pasty and you spread it on the surface of the cloth. And when it dries, it shrinks. So it creates cracks like a dried riverbed and then you can apply either a color into the cracks or you can apply a bleaching chemical to remove the color which is what I did so that fabric is a dark very dark blue and the light crackles are from the the bleaching chemical and uh then you know after that happens you just wash off the starch and you got this really amazing texture there. And then I have other, the other parts of the collage are silk screened drawings of rocks that I printed and then did a little painting on. And those are collaged onto the surface. And then there's some um, stitching also. You're one of three artists in the upcoming show Discovery Through Process. And all three of you employ distinctive fiber techniques to create your artwork. Could you describe what process means to you and the role it plays in your art making uh, practice? Well, process is a method or a use of materials. I think I am very attracted to working with real like raw materials or actual materials as opposed to digitally. Um, although I have really learned the value of Photoshop and it helps me sometimes um, prepare if I've taken a photograph, adapt a photograph so that I can use it and make a silk screen from it, or maybe change a drawing a little bit. But mostly I like to work by hand with very kind of basic materials. And um, I like to combine the actual, um, I'm trying to use a word that isn't process since you wanted me to define <laughs> process, but the, the actual method um, of working with the materials, I like it to be combined with thinking at the same time. So it's kind of like um, I, might, I might have a screen, but I'm moving the screen around and printing it in different places on the fabric changing the color and then looking at what I've printed and reacting to that and then 
placing other images in there, you know, to, to complete the composition, um, as opposed to planning the entire thing out and then executing it. That is not my preferred method because it's too much of like, the steps are too separated. So you mentioned that you will silk screen on fabric. It made me wonder about your background. Did you start uh, in textiles or did you, um, it, how did you arrive at where you're at in your process? Was it uh, always, always working in textiles or had you worked in other mediums before that? I actually thought I was going to work in sculpture. Um, and I went to graduate school in sculpture for a year, but I, while I was in that particular program, I discovered um, a fiber class and I related much more to working with, um, I, I, I worked sculpturally, but with um, plant materials. So I connected more with that than the metal and the prevailing kind of, I don't know, formal, formalist, um, aesthetic at the time. Um, and so then I went, you know, into a different graduate program and learned about not only, you know, how to use fiber sculpturally, but also how to print. And that was a huge revelation to me and really, really fun and exciting. And, um, that's kind of, you know, how it started, went to the university of Michigan and, studied with Sherry Smith and it was great. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, you had sent me a, an image of your work wall, which is really cool to see. And I think um, the process that you've described here in this interview is sort of, you can kind of see it in your work wall. Can, mm -hmm. can you just talk a little bit about your work wall and, and what you do with that? Yeah. So just as an example, if, if, if you were showing people that, that image that I sent, you see, there are um, a lot of versions of what they are is uh, castor bean seeds enlarged to, you know, sort of like this big, and then different drawings of rocks, very simple line drawings, um, but they're printed on different kinds of fabric and they're hand colored in various ways. Um, and those are what I think of as my raw materials. There's also a couple of large-ish leaf prints there. One is a, a bleach out print on black, and then the other is a print onto uh, orange fabric. And these, these things become part of my big pile of raw materials. And they may not all be used. Some of them might not be used for years. Um, but there it's, it's my version of a sketchbook, I think. So the more things I try out, the more used to, I get to the idea that, you know, I'm working on. So I'm working on this. I want to work on this piece having to do with rocks and a shoreline, but I haven't figured it out yet. And the more I'm print, the more, um, options are going to suggest themselves to me. And then I'll take those pieces of fabric and start cutting those uh, the prints out of it and then recombining them um, maybe with other printed fabric, previously printed or dyed fabric, resist dyed fabric. At this point, I don't exactly know. I have a really, and like what I was saying earlier, I've got a kind of a vague compositional outline in my head of what may happen. Um, but another thing that could take place is that I'll get all these rocks printed and then uh, I'll something else will happen, you know, and the rocks will get used in some other piece. And then maybe three years down the line, I'll make the rocks and the shoreline. So it's uh, it's just a way for me. It's a way to kind of collect my thoughts, I guess. Um, and it it is not not always how I've worked. And there are some examples on the website of things that are much more tight and organized. But this is, for the past few years, this has been a really um, comfortable way that I, that I like 
developing my pieces. It sounds fittingly organic. Yeah. And I think um, just that I'm, I guess, it's also when you've worked in a certain medium for a long period of time, you just get comfortable with it. Um, it's, um, and I'm not, also I'm not afraid that things might go wrong and that something might get wrecked because this way I have so many other um, examples that I've made already and I have the original screens so I can always print more. Um, but I think the, um, when I went to the residency at Sleeping Bear Dunes, I had this finite period of time to work and I just had to do it. And sometimes it takes me a long time to cut things out because it's commitment. If I cut it out of there, then uh, I gotta, then I have a hole, you know? So, <laughs> but I just had to. So I just had to start cutting things up and assembling. And it was actually really wonderful because it, it sort of forced me a little bit further into this way of working that I had been sort of starting on. So. Very cool. Um, Susan, thanks so much for, for uh, talking with me about your process and your work. Um, Discovery Through Process uh, Contemporary Fiber Art will be open to the public on April 30th, and there will be a free reception for the artists on the closing date of the exhibit, which is Saturday, June 8th, from 1 to 3 p.m., and all three artists will be in attendance and conducting a lively conversation, which will include a Q&A with the public. So if you have questions for Susan, you can ask them then. Uh, Susan, thanks again for talking with me today. Thank you.